a dear friend of ours and a friend of the movement and a man who was on the first phone call starting this modern day Tea Party movement is going to help MC the last portion of this. His name is Andrew Langer and he's from the Institute for Liberty. He's going to come up in just a moment. Before he does that, I want to let you know, Tea Party Patriots meets with local coordinators every single week across this country on a webinar. Our local coordinators and our grassroots supporters set the direction of this, of this organization. As soon as we heard from Lois Lerner that afternoon, wait, as soon as we heard her on that conference call admit what she did, because we did receive an e a letter from her, so we heard from her before, but when we heard that on the conference call, we were able to reach out to groups across this country and by Wednesday of the following week, we had 20 different groups who had been personally targeted by the IRS here. They're still telling their stories right now and I wanna make sure that you hear these stories. They're very, very important. We also have people who are still going to speak who are from different parts of this world and have legally immigrated to this country. They've escaped tyranny, communism, socialism, one of the ladies was born on D-Day under fascism, and her doctor actually told her mother that the Americans have landed before they told her mother she had a girl. These are the kind of patriots we have in our organization who've been fighting with you across this country. You need to hear from them because they're fighting with us for freedom. And our very last speaker this afternoon is a friend of ours from Italy. He has Tea Party Italia. He understands that America stands for freedom across this world, and he's going to encourage you to keep fighting for freedom. These, this is our network. All these congressmen and senators who spoke, we appreciate them fighting, and we will stand with them as they fight for us. I'm here today because of all of these people who've personally been affected by the IRS. And I just want to thank each of you personally for being here with us as we were able to get these stories out to you and to the rest of America and to C-SPAN and all the other networks who've covered this for making sure these stories get out there today. And finally, I want you to know that if you've been targeted and you think you're a victim of unfair, unequal application of the law by the government, or you work for the government and you're aware of waste, fraud, and abuse, and you think we need to know about it, we, we you see, we stand with you, and we will stand with you, and you're seeing how we will stand with you. So please, if you're aware of any of that, you can either go to our website on teapartypatriots.org and there's a banner that floats that tells you to tell us your IRS story. Or by this evening, we will have a site up that is called Report Government Abuse, but it's reportgovtabuse.com. If you're aware of something that's going on and you think we need to be aware of it, you think Congress needs to be aware of it and you want us to help get the story out, we will do everything in our power to help you. Thank you so much for being here and it's my pleasure to introduce my friend, Andrew Langer. Hey everybody, let's give it up for Jenny Beth Martin who has been, and, and I wanna point out, he's standing behind the sign, but her husband Lee, Lee step out here. Come on, give us all a wave. So I'm gonna uh, land this plane. So bring it on in. I know you all are out there. Folks are starting to wander off. Come on, let's bring it in. We're gonna have some fun. We still have stuff on the agenda this afternoon. Some really great speakers. Next up, he just testified two weeks ago before the House Ways and Means Committee on the IRS targeting of his organization, Lynchpins of Liberty, Let's welcome Kevin Kukaji. Are y'all hungry? I'm starving. My name is Kevin Kukaji, and I'm president and founder of Lynchpins of Liberty, which is an American leadership development enterprise. Our motto is to challenge the imagination of the rising generation, and we do this by mentoring high school and college students in conservative political philosophy, to give them a taste for freedom and the skills to be free. 
Yet for the past two and a half years, the IRS has unlawfully delayed and obstructed my application for tax-exempt status. Under threats of perjury, the IRS has demanded that we identify those we teach, some of whom are minors, to detail our political views and to describe the locations where I mentor these students. Like its ideological parent, the IRS has enslaved generations of Americans, conditioning our rights on how we choose to exercise them. Like telling me I can ride the bus, provided I sit in the back, we can become tax exempt as long as we do not voice any dissent against the present administration. Well, like, the, like its ideological parent, the IRS must be abolished. For to enslave us for our political and religious beliefs is every bit as much of a moral outrage as to enslave us for the color of our skin. And we will not be deterred by the likes of Congressman McDermott, who actually had the gall to suggest that I may have lied before Congress simply because I wasn't under oath. Mr. McDermott, you may be projecting, because I don't make a distinction between whether or not I am under oath. I tell the truth all the time. And to Mr. Cummings, who last week suggested that the IRS scandal was over, I remind you, sir, that our rights come from God, not you. And if you fail to defend our God-given rights, others will be raised up to replace you. Men and women who uphold liberty and justice for all, not just the politically connected. For when the state transgresses its legitimate authority by asserting itself into the most fundamental of our rights, our rights of conscience and free speech, we have a duty, even should it cost us our very lives, to oppose such an unlawful usurpation of power, which is not only a violation of our Constitution, but of human nature itself. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Next up, this movement couldn't be functioning without independent media, organizations like Breitbart, and to that end we have Sonny Johnson, Sonny, come on up. We the people. Welcome home. I want to fight to save the America I grew up in. I'm sorry, but I have to vehemently disagree. I don't want to save the America that I grew up in. See, my America wasn't God, country, and family. It was Democrat, skin color, and gender. My America wasn't we pledge our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. To borrow a phrase from Larry Elder, it was more like bitch moan and whine. My America wasn't life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My America was public housing, food stamps, and the first of the month. Poverty, death, and destruction. My America was the first America generation to experience socialism on American shores. I do not want to save that America. I want to utterly destroy that America. I want to, for the first time in my life, see the America that our founders promised. I only know one way to do this, and it's radical. Glenn Beck started it, and let me finish it. Y'all ready? Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. God said, if you show up, if you humble yourself, if you denounce your wicked ways, he would heal our land. What is more wicked than this government? So no, I have no tears for you. I have no boo-hoos because you bit the bear and the bear bit back. Only thing I have for you is applause, and I'll see you in 2014. Amen. 
Thank you, Sonny. It is my proud pleasure to introduce a champion of liberty, the congressman from the 4th District of Arizona, Representative Paul Gosar. Wow, what a great group and what a great lady to follow after. You know, James Madison said, if, we, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. Well, if you look at this administration, boy, can we find an angel? That's why they ought to have the theme song as from the Greg Allman band of I'm No Angel. Isn't it clear that the Obama administration's view of federal power knows no limit? Isn't it clear that the Obama administration's view of federal power does not respect the Constitution? Where is, whether it's the IRS or Benghazi or Fast and Furious, it is clear that this administration is on an all-out assault on the Constitution. That's why it's up to we, the people, to bind this government to the Constitution. If the IRS can target and discriminate against any one group of Americans, it can do it to anyone. This is truly unacceptable. The IRS has been beating up on American people from their bully tactics, and it's long overdue that we, the people, fight back. Today is that day that we start. We need to fight, fight back against this arrogant and unrestrained government. And that's why I've introduced this IRS Anti-Abuse Act. According to the former IRS chief, targeting groups isn't illegal, but this makes it illegal. My bill would make it a fireable offense. Someone needs to be prosecuted, and someone needs to go to prison. This is about right versus wrong. When our government is limited, rights are protected, and freedom flourishes. I'm not running from the fight. I'm running to the fight like you should. That's why on July 1st in Prescott, Arizona, we're having an Arizona congressional field hearing where you, the people, get to come back and take back this government. Talk about holding this government accountable. Be vigilant. So now is our time to stand up for liberty and our freedoms. It's time to get government back. Let's get back America the way we see it. Thank you and God bless. As we move this along, we're down to the wire here. I want to bring up Pam Stout from the Idaho Tea Party. In 1954, my family immigrated to the United States. My parents wanted better opportunities for my sister and me and hoped we would be able to live the American dream. We worked hard and made that dream a reality. Now I fear that the children and grandchildren I bore will not have those same opportunities. In 2009, because of the Tea Party, I started to study the Constitution and learn about the honorable, intelligent men who founded our Constitutional Republic. What I learned was not what I was taught in school. Our founders gave us a system that ensured an individual's rights. Today, our government has abandoned our Constitution. Daily, we are asked to watch as our rights are infringed upon. The IRS, the EPA, and other agencies target groups and individuals. They enforce rules and regulations that are outside the powers granted in our Constitution. Government is not meant to be altruistic. Americans are. Today, each of us has a responsibility to past and future generations, to work to restore our constitutional republic, and to remember that liberty is never dead. It lives in all of our hearts. Thank you. Hi, guys. All right, so next up, we have a threefer for you all. Uh, they are folks from the KDT party. We have Darcy Karoff, Kel uh, sorry, Kelly Horsley, and Paul Simpson. Come on up, guys. Y'all were normally in that crowd, so this is really awesome. Um, I just wanted to let you know, our tea party's been targeted for um, since 2010. We are continuing to be targeted. We are getting fined to this day for um, after we withdrew our application, we refiled. Um, we are still getting targeted. So when Lois Lerner and Douglas Shulman and the Obama administration say, 
it was over in 2012, they are lying. <laughs> Katie Tea Party and other conservative groups around the country have been bruised and battered. We've been bullied, threatened, targeted by our own government. If the political elite here in Washington, D.C. believe they can use the, their political powers to make us hide in fear, they underestimate the spirit of the American people. Amen. We are in a battle for the heart and soul of our country. We will not go away quietly. I will not be shoved to the back of the bus, refused service, or intimidated simply because my government is too big and too powerful. We deserve the country that our founding fathers fought hard for so many years ago. Our children deserve better than what we're giving them. Let's squeeze DC from the top down, bottom up, and inside out. Hey, Washington, can you hear us now? In Proverbs 27, 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. This is something that can definitely be applied to the church, but what about to the realm of politics? I personally think it can be. Until the 2008 TARP package, I had never picked up the phone to call my U.S. representative. One September day in 2008, all of that changed. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a homeschool mom, a taxpayer, and a full-time volunteer for pregnancy help centers. I have always had morals, unlike the IRS and the NSA, and I definitely don't want the government involved in my personal business. I became engaged and involved in local Houston, Texas area politics with Houston Tea Party Society and KDT Party Patriots and started listening to what all of their members were talking about. It wasn't about party affiliation or social issues. It was about liberty. At one of the many meetings I've attended, I heard someone say, liberty is messy. I didn't understand what that meant at first, but now I think I get it. I've been sharpened by the liberty movement, by the members involved in the new media. My opinions and viewpoints have changed dramatically since the day I picked up the phone to dial the White House. To the IRS and the NSA, we here love liberty and we will not be silenced. Loving liberty shouldn't make you irrelevant to any political conversation. Liberty is not a dirty word. Thank you. Our founders wrote in the Declaration of Independence, the history of the present king is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. Does that sound familiar? So they fought to secure their rights, their unalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so we fight. We fight because we cherish our liberty so we can live our lives as we want to live them, not as the government wants us to live. Because we love our God, and we love our families, and we, ch we love our country, a country founded not by subjects of a king, but by a free people who can d build their own directions, lead their own lives, and direct their own destiny. So we have a rare chance to rebuild the distrust of government on which this country was founded. And that is what is essential. Eternally, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty, and we must distrust power and fight for our liberty. Thank you. We ask all Americans to join us. God bless our country, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Katie Tea Party. And next up, visiting us from Dallas, is Katrina Pearson from the Dallas Tea Party. Come on up, Katrina. I don't know, can you guys handle another constitutional conservative from Texas? Yeah. You know, we believe that the people have the right to keep and bear arms and it must never be infringed. We believe that people have an unalienable right against unreasonable searches and seizures of their persons, their houses, papers, and effects. That includes emails. And that no such outright, no search outright should ever be conducted except upon probable cause of wrongdoing. And we are told by the Republican suits and geniuses that this sort of philosophy 
is radical and extreme. And if that be the case, then put me down as a radical extremist. Or in ancient establishment dialect, a wacko bird. I think there's a lot of wacko birds here today. But you can also put me down as someone that believes that moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. The government has no business whatsoever demanding to know who your members are and who you're talking to. And Lindsey Graham, FreedomWorks is waiting on lindsayspassword.com. It is time to rein in government and put it back into its constitutional box before it's too late. 2010, we need to do it again in 2014. Awesome. Next up, my old friend, Seton Motley from Less Government. I can leave the mic up for him because he's a big guy. Hello, fellow federal audit recipients. Uh, I'm going to be very brief, and I just want to make a point because I think we're, we're seeing a lot of it, and it's going to happen, and the IRS is the chief enforcement agent of this. As we all know, they're collecting as much data about us as possible whether it's the NSA program, the PRISM program, the Verizon program, the Nucleon program, which you don't know about yet, but go look it up. It's probably worse than PRISM. They're collecting all this data on you so they can use it against you, as we saw with the IRS, with the Tea Party, with Patriot, with Conservative, with Bill of Rights. How dare you all? Uh, so just keep in mind that this is the chief enforcement agent for the government that is currently accumulating on this data on you. So if we succeed in auditing, auditing it and then shutting it down, they lose their chief thug agency. So let's do that. Thank you very much. Boy, Seton really, Seton hit the target just dead on, and I'm back there doing things. Uh, next up is Suzanne Guggenheim. The Americans have landed. <laughs> 69 years ago, on June 6, 44, better known as D-Day, those were the words that greeted me to life instead of the traditional it's a girl. The Americans have landed. Those words were spreading like bonfire, bringing hope into a Europe that had been torn by two wars and muzzled by two terrible totalitarian regimes, Nazism and Communism. America was the only hope to ever put an end to the madness, and it did come through. I was born in Budapest, Hungary, and it took three more years and a lot of sufferings to my mom to escape Nazism and then Communism and flee to France. Most other people did not get that lucky. I was then raised in Paris, but sadly, this beautiful country had come out of the war with a very strong communist party and the socialist influence kept increasing. Sorry, I'll try to go really quick. But my point is that when a socialist uh, finally in 81 got elected as president and to communists and his government, we decided it was time to come and look freedom in the eyes and find what the American dream was really about. And it was incredible. We really found the taste of freedom. And it was tightly woven into every detail of American life. Because we had not always known those things that for you generally seem like granted, we appreciated every one of them. And it hurts when we see them being taken away, being ridiculed, and being punished. As my husband used to say, I've seen the future, and I did not like it. So Patriot, it's really time to wake up, stand up, and restore our American dream that's being shattered before it turns into a collective, worldwide nightmare. Yes. Th this country is still the best hope for billions of people 
whatever the media will say. We cannot fail them. We cannot fail our children. They have nowhere else to go. Our freedom is at stake. We won't let it be destroyed by the IRS or by the NSA or by the illegals who want to dictate how we should live and change our country forever. This is why we fight. This is why we are here. We will not give up. We will not give in. And we will never forget Ronald Reagan's warning. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. God bless every one of you. God bless America. There you go. Next up, I want to introduce Laura Van Overscheld from the Mississippi Tea Party. I want to thank all of you who stayed and stuck it out here today because we've got to get this, this big message through. We were targeted in the Mississippi Tea Party by the IRS. We got two rounds of lengthy questions. After the second round, we decided we're not going to do this. We're going to, we're going to take away our tax exempt status. We've got to take our energy, our time, and our work and get our work done. What we were able to do is we were able to affect the first conservative House of Representatives it, it, since Reconstruction, 144 years. It's huge. We had a Democrat, we had a Democrat House. Because of that, we got our first conservative Speaker of the House ever in Mississippi. We got petition signs for voter ID. We got it, we got it through our legislature in 2011. We, we made a big difference, and now the IRS doesn't like us because we want to have firm, free citizens who actually vote, who belong in Mississippi to vote. When Obamacare was passed, we were given the, the uh, information that in order to champion Obamacare, we had to do two things. We had to stop the state exchanges, and we had to stop the expansion of Medicare. We stopped a Republican IR, uh, insurance agent from doing that. We have more work to do. We can't worry what the IRS is doing, and we have to do it the best way we can. Thank you all. Next up, from one of my favorite towns in California's Central Valley, Arkady Faktorovich with the Los Banos Tea Party. Hello, everybody. I raised and grew up in former Soviet Union. A land of paradise, land of slaves, and tyranny. I was fortunate enough to emigrate when I was uh, 30 years old. After serving my time in the Soviet military, I was an officer. I was living in Austria and Italy. I was photographed, fingerprinted. I had a thorough medical exam. I had to submit my uh, copies of my diploma, my birth certificate, and other bunch of documents. And then I, I was granted an interview with the US Embassy in Rome. After two months, I was getting a visa and a work permit to come to the greatest country the world has ever knew. <laughs> this is wonderful land, exceptional land. And we have to save it because we're under attack. Our government knew about me, everything, before I even entered this country. And now the same government let people through without knowing who they are, where they came from, what the purpose of their visit, and other good stuff. And I can tell you as a former military officer, the border can be fixed and must be fixed. And just the lip service that we get from the Gang of Eight that don't represent us at all. After the Congress allocated funds for building a fence on the border seven years ago, I would like to ask, where the money? Where did it go? And why the fence is only complete 5%. As far as IRS, I would like to tell the IRS that you remind me of the KGB, FBI and other three letters instruments of control and tyranny. I never thought that that tactics of tyranny will follow me to this wonderful land of ours. I never thought 
that this magnificent ship called the United States of America will sail to the des destination I came from. I don't want to be there, and neither do you. So let's change it. It's in our power. It's our country. God bless you. I love you all. I would like to welcome to the stage the chairman of the Kentucky Tea Party Patriots, Hans Marzen. The coordinator, the, <laughs> the Tea Party coordinator for the state of Kentucky. My name's Hans Marzen. In 1976, I came for a three-week vacation to America, and it didn't take me three weeks to realize this was the country I wanted to live in. My wife and I returned, having gone back to England, we returned to live here. I have my green card in case uh, the government is uh, watching. I'm a legal immigrant and I have the privilege, along with you, of paying for all the illegal immigrants who are here. Housing, welfare, Everything else, it's unbelievable, including the iPhone and the monthly bills for it. I was proud when I came over here. I was proud of the little town I lived in in California at the time. The way we were able to decide for ourselves how many policemen, how many firemen, what sort of school district. I was proud of the government at the time, the White House, but most of all, I loved that constitution. Since then, unfortunately, with the criminal administration under Obama, that constitution is being shredded. And I'm giving up hope except for one thing, and that is you, the patriots in America. And I stand to fight with you against this criminal government to replace it with something that's legal, democratic, and once again, God-fearing. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. There we go. We're getting down to it right now. We've got Caleb Yee from the Student Tea Party. Thank you. We are here today, regardless of age, gender, race, political, and religious affiliation, to send out a clear and bold message in response to the intolerable acts committed by the IRS. This was a clear example of a direct attack on our rights as Americans, and we will not stand down. This is not the American my grandparents and parents legally immigrated to in order to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. And this is definitely not the America that I want my children to live in. Whether you believe that the recent exposures of the NSA were for the good of the country or for the bad of it, one thing is certain. Government has gotten too damn big. The infringing and unsustainable health care law along with the attack on religion and the recent discovery of Verizon giving up our phone records to the NSA are definite and concrete proof that we no longer have the limited government that a constitutional republic deserves. I refuse to let my generation be ruled under this type of coercion, and I refuse to let our posterity be ruled under this type of injustice. So keep firm, have faith, and know that you are not alone. Thank you, and God bless America. It gives you real, real inspiration, doesn't it, for the future? Next up, we have Jonathan Dunn from YoungPatriots.com. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to say something controversial that people in there won't like. America is the greatest country in the world. But I got a question for you. Did that make America the greatest country in the world? Did you make America the greatest country in the world? I hear so many people that I talk to, they say, this is too, this is too big of an obstacle. We can't win. Let me tell you something. This country has overcome so much. You've overcome the Cold War. You've overcome World War II. You've conquered everything from the swamp to the stars. 
Are you telling me you can't beat a collective, totalitarian, utopian mindset that currently engulfs Washington? The answers to the question is, in the first three words of your constitution, it's we the people. You can overcome this. You will overcome this. Because with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it's what defines you. But most importantly, it's what makes you different from the rest of the world. You are not a collective. You are not the masses. You are an individual. Thank you so much for everything you do. And God bless you in this fight. You have to overcome. Thank you and God bless America. It takes, it takes a lot to put yourself out there and make yourself a target. But one of the best warriors for freedom that this nation has ever seen is right here, Anita Moncrief from True the Vote. Five years ago, I plotted and planned with ACORN on how we were going to steal elections. Today, I stand proudly here as a part of True the Vote, one of the leading nonpartisan election integrity groups in the country. And I tell you the reason why they're being targeted, just like all these other groups, is because they're effective, because they're out there fighting for the rights of all people, not just a small minority, not just the Democrats, but for all people. Just today, a True the Vote empowered group out of Baltimore County sorry, Baltimore City, which is represented by Elijah Cummings, was able to expose voted, uh, bloated voter rolls full of dead and inactive voters. We're out there trying to make a difference and we're being targeted. So what does that say about our administration when they would try to shut us down for pushing for free and fair elections? It's because they are afraid of us, because they know they can only win by cheating. They can only win by silencing us. They can only win by being in intimidating. But truth the vote has fought back. We are suing the federal government as well as individual IRS employees. We will not take this standing down. Thank you. And one of the most amazing things about this movement has been the movements that it has spurred abroad. One of the best, oldest, and fastest growing is the Tea Party Italia. Would please welcome Carlo Sandrin. Three years ago, we wondered what we could do to make Italy, our country, more free. We asked the Tea Party Patriots and Jenny Bat what we should do. They suggested we to build the Tea Party Italia. At the first, we thought it's the crazy idea because in Italy only 10% speak in English and out of every 10 people, eight of them are socialists. We believe it is very important to be called a Tea Party as it is the highest tribute we could go give to the founding fathers at the land of liberty. That's why, that's why we also feel American. And we feel like Americans not because we are citizens, but because we are free. And we fight for it. We choose, we choose to do it, not because it's easy, but because they are hard. Amen. And if we can send a man to the moon, then we can make our country and a better place for the Italian citizen. After three years, the Tea Party Italian was born from a conversation by mail with Jenny Beth, has become the first grassroots Italian movement with over 35,000 supporters and activists. It is the largest Tea Party group outside the United States. And, and we increase our membership by thousand every month. In 2013, we elected our first 10 deputies. And in a decade, when I'm going to control the 50% of our parliaments. By the autumn, we will grow from Italy to Europe. And we will give birth to the first European conservative movement for freedom. Which encompass the mass biggest European Tea Party movements. It's aiming 
only right to call here European patriots. You may ask, I am standing here today at this rally. It is because I am concerned that the United States, a champion of liberty, is suffering because of the big governments. I know how this field has Italy also corrupted by big government. And you see how this has affected my country and all the Europe. But now the eyes of the free world are looking here and the United States and how Americans will go out against attack of freedom from their governments. Their president seems to want to lead American into the storm from which we are trying to feel from European. For us, young people, free citizens of the world, and for our father and grandfather that immigrated here thousand years ago, the United States of America is not only a nation, they are something more. They are proof that freedom is not free. Freedom is worth doing for, yes, but even more. Freedom is worth living and fire for. For us, for us, and for the future generation, freedom will prevail. We never surrender. Signed 70, 76, the United States told us that if you have a dream and if you want to live free and make your dream reality, then with the God's protection, his world crossing the oceans to contribute in a building the dream of freedoms that no other country know. God help America and the freedom-loving America to ensure the next generation that a limited government, the fiscal responsibility. Thank you, everybody, and God bless America. Exactly. Well, guys, we are nearing the end. I'll have a few housekeeping items of note in just a moment. But I want to leave you with some final thoughts here. I, once again, I'm Andrew Langer, president of the Institute for Liberty. Ladies and gentlemen, our republic is dying. It is just that simple. For more than the last half century, we have been slowly strangling it, failing to understand who we are as a people, where we came from, or why and how this experiment in classical liberalism grew and thrived. At its core, all revolution is dissent, the vocal opposition to the prevailing power structure and what that power structure is attempting to do. And recognizing the Tea Party movement's truly revolutionary ideals, what did the prevailing power structure do? It tried, time and again, to suppress that dissent, to silence the opposition. The IRS scandal was not the first instance. It wasn't the second. It wasn't even the third. It was the fourth or the fifth attempt by those in power who asked their supporters to inform on their friends and family, launched social media monitoring programs, engaged in a concerted and coordinated effort to, dis to besmirch the power structure's opposition. Did it work? It almost did, though, didn't it? It almost did. But you stand here and you are the hardiest bunch of people I've ever seen. You stand here in defiance of tyranny, of nascent fascism rearing its ugly head. And those are not terms that I use loosely or unthinkingly. You see, for a very long time, I've been reluctant to publicly utter what all of us have suspected. But now I have to speak plainly. We live in the times of a tin pot tyranny at the head of a multi-trillion dollar bureaucracy that has stifled and hobbled the most vibrant nation ever to exist on the face of the earth. Were we a nation of responsible adults, we would look this reality squarely in the eye and say something must change, something has to change. But apparently we exist in a reality in which change consists of doing the same things we have always done, only accelerating them to a blinding speed, a speed with which we simply cannot pay attention to the shifting targets, the shiny objects, 
all of the garbage they send our way in order to make our nation weak and puny and no longer the shining city on the hill this once was. The greatest republic in the history of the world does not look upon the intrusion of executive power into our private lives and simply shrug. The greatest republic in the history of the world does not allow for its watchdogs, those who ensure that executive power is discharged fairly to be harassed and turn our heads away. The greatest republic in the history of the world does not allow for the political process to be hijacked by a group of crony partisan bureaucrats and then reward that agency with an immeasurable amount of additional power. This is why this event, this movement, is not about Republicans versus Democrats, Obama supporters versus Bush, McCain, or Romney supporters. This is not about right versus left. This is about right versus wrong. All of us, left or right, Democrat or Republican, Libertarian or Socialist, all of us are threatened when government grows too large for the people to control it. Since every time government grows, individual liberty is diminished. You're here because, like me, you care deeply about the future of this nation. You know what happens when vibrant republics rot and become tarnished despotisms. You know that the key to strength in a nation such as ours is the most expansive definition of liberty. So I leave you with this question. What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to do to fight? I leave you with that. Thank you all very much for coming out today. I want to thank, I want to thank our sponsor organization, Tea Party Patriots. I want to thank all of our speakers, all of the members of Congress who came out today. And as you leave, and say thanks to the folks who are around you, and thank everybody who's around you, and thank you once again for showing that this is not a movement of, of, of mindless, uncontrollable rabble, but peaceful patriots exercising their First Amendment rights. Remember that we all operate under the scout precept that we always leave a place better than we found it. So please, pick up after yourselves. Thank you very much. Drive safe, stay safe, and keep on fighting. Thank you all very much. And God bless America. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. You should reject these voices. We are patriotic Americans. We exercise the right to free speech. And we don't understand why the government tried to stop us. There's absolutely no targeting. This is the kind of back and forth that happens when people apply for uh, 501c4. This is vaguely tyrannical behavior yes, it by is. the American government. I think what the IRS did is bordering on tyrannical behavior. Some of the words that were used for profiling, Bill of Rights, U.S. Constitution, Patriot. These are all things that Americans celebrate, and now they're being turned into a negative. I think the IRS needs to fix its labeling machine. We're the San Fernando Valley Patriots, not Occupy Oakland. My name is Lois Lerner, and I'm the director of exempt organizations at the Internal Revenue Service. I have not done anything wrong. I have not broken any laws. I've been advised by my counsel to assert my constitutional right not to testify. She waived her right to Fifth Amendment privilege by, by issuing an opening statement. She ought to stand here and answer our question. We cannot have a condition in America where people's politics are the basis for IRS attacks. I want to protect and preserve the America that I grew up in. The America that people cross oceans and risk their lives to become a part of. 
and I'm terrified it is slipping away. I'm not here as a serf or a vassal. I'm not begging my lords for mercy. I'm a born free American woman, wife, mother, and citizen. And I'm telling my government that you've forgotten your place.